Welcome to the Counter Vortex, your weekly roundup of underreported news and views from around the world with an unapologetically radical dissident left perspective. Brought to you by your chief reporter, ranter, and blogger, Bill Weinberg. That would be me. Palestinian human rights organizations and others have sued President Joe Biden, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, and Secretary of State Anthony Blinken for complicity in genocide and violating the duty to prevent genocide in relation to the ongoing Gaza war. The Center for Constitutional Rights filed the case in U.S. District Court in San Francisco on behalf of Defense for Children International Palestine, Al-Haq Human Rights Group, and individual plaintiffs affected by the conflict, asserting violations of the 1948 Genocide Convention and the 1988 Genocide Convention Implementation Act. The International Criminal Court, ICC, released a statement saying it received a referral from Bangladesh, Bolivia, Comoros, Djibouti, and South Africa regarding the situation in the state of Palestine. ICC prosecutor Kareem A.A. Khan affirmed that an investigation is currently ongoing with its own dedicated team. The five countries made the ICC referral in accordance with their powers under the Rome Statute, the founding legislation of the International Criminal Court. All five of the referring countries are party to the Rome Statute, as is the state of Palestine. Israel is not and continues not to recognize the authority of the International Criminal Court. The International Court of Justice at The Hague issued an interim order directing the Syrian government to take all measures within its powers to prevent torture. This development stems from a case brought by the Netherlands and Canada accusing the Syrian government of engaging in a prolonged campaign of torture against its own citizens. The court's order seeks to safeguard potential victims as the case proceeds. Syria is accused of breaching the Convention Against Torture and other cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment. The Intersectional Syria website has issued a statement of free Syrians in solidarity with the Palestinian people, opening, quote, We Syrians united in the revolutionary struggle against the Assad regime and its imperialist sponsors stand firmly and unequivocally with the Palestinian people in Gaza the West Bank, and across historic Palestine in their fight for liberation from Israeli colonization, occupation, and apartheid, end quote. In addition to drawing parallels between the bombardment and repression by Israel and the Bashar Assad dictatorship, the statement emphasizes the cultural and historical links between the Syrian and Palestinian peoples, and accuses the Assad regime of hypocritically exploiting the Palestinian cause in rhetoric while betraying it in actual deeds. Last month, Kenya's President William Ruto announced that El Nino climate phenomenon, which has historically brought devastating flooding to the country, would not occur this year contradicting weeks of warnings from meteorologists. Today, across the country, at least 60 people have died 
Over 50,000 more have been displaced. Entire towns have been submerged and hundreds of acres of farmland are underwater as heavy rains associated with El Nino lash the region. This caused the new humanitarian website to quip why politicians shouldn't play weathermen. And it could be even worse in neighboring Somalia, where nearly 1.2 million people have been affected by flooding, prompting the country to declare an emergency. The World Meteorological Organization predicts that this El Nino will last at least through April 2024, with impacts on world food security. A comprehensive U.S. government report has confirmed that extreme weather linked to climate change is worsening despite drops in U.S. greenhouse gas emissions. The report further urges action to mitigate potentially catastrophic consequences. The fifth national climate assessment follows a rash of extreme weather events across the U.S. this this year, from the deadly wildfires in Maui to intense flooding in the Northeast. The assessment, mandated by the Global Change Research Act of 1990, describes the increase in extreme weather as unprecedented over thousands of years and warns of large-scale changes in temperature, sea levels, ocean acidification, and rainfall patterns with a cascade of effects in every part of the country. Amid Israel's massive aerial bombardment of Gaza, accusations of anti-Semitism at demonstrations for Palestine are mounting. But some instances were later revealed to have been distorted or exaggerated. The increasingly accepted official working definition of anti-Semitism dangerously muddies the water by explicitly conflating anti-Zionism and Jew hatred. Media questioning of the claims of the Israeli military has even been compared to Holocaust denial. Yet actual unambiguous Jew hatred is meanwhile much in evidence from America to Europe and elsewhere around the world. This raises the imperative on activists to genuinely grapple with the distinction rather than merely dismissing anti-Semitism as Zionist propaganda, which is, ironically, itself an anti-Semitic response. In episode 201 of the Counter Vortex podcast, Bill Weinberg, that would be me, explores the dilemma. You can listen on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Counter Vortex. And while you're there, please subscribe. Also check out our sibling website, New Jewish Resistance, for a proudly Jewish anti-Zionist perspective on Gaza and the question of Palestine generally. NewJewishResistance.org Fighting Zionism and Anti-Semitism Defending Pan-Semitic Unity And do follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. And please join us next week for the Counter Vortex.